Good day, this is uh, Barry Drennan with Fairburn Protocol H2H. Um, in an earlier video, I demonstrated uh, the Fairburn paper knife. I did a variance on it. Uh, what I used was a Timmy's cup, that's a coffee cup from a local uh, uh, Canadian uh, coffee shop chain. Uh, you could use the McDonald's cup, uh, coffee cup. Uh, I used a medium size. Uh, just the reason I did that was to show you how available this weapon was and how easy it was to acquire materials of which to produce it uh, in times of duress, etc. Uh, you could, uh, of course, now understand that back in the day, there weren't Timmy's and there weren't McDonald's uh, back in the Fairburn years, but there was paper, and so what they did was they made it with a standard paper. So for the purpose today, I'm just going to uh, rob a piece of paper from uh, my, my kid's little school pad here, and uh, in doing so, uh, kind of show that it's, it's any piece of paper you can get your hands on. This one's stapled together with a bunch of other ones, so I took it. So now the way the original one was created was uh, you fold it into three, three pieces like this, and then you fold it down the center, uh, down the center meaning in, in this fashion. Now I, I prefer to uh, make a little change to that, but it's not a real change, and uh, we'll see what I'm, I'm saying. So instead of doing this and then folding it in half, uh, I found that uh, when I'm walking down the street and such, because you can do these while walking without even looking at the paper, uh, I, I folded it that way, and then I did my, my folds in this fashion. It really makes very, very little difference uh, in, in, in how it works out, and that's fine. You know. So then we make a, another fold in the center here, more of a guide than a fold, you see. And with this, we start our folds in. We're going to do three folds, so kind of like three pieces of the pie uh, to make that inner fold uh, correct. And so that's the way that is. So I'll, I'll bring that up a little closer so you can see how that is done. Okay. Uh, so you have one, two, three. So here's the one, the two, and the three. So one, two, and then the three creates the center. Now we're going to create that same thing on the other side over here. So we're going to come in again with the same material. So we're going to come in with a one. Now we want to keep a little bit of gap here, so to speak, because we don't want it to fold over the other one. So we take care to, to watch for that. Again, it, it's really a no-brainer doing this. Uh, it, it's not hard to do it at all. When I go to fold it over into the final fold, Okay, uh, what I do at this point is I want to bring it in like this with my thumbnail in center. So again, I don't want them to fold over each other because that'll weaken it. Now, the thing to understand with this here, all right, is that it's a very, very effective weapon. You can punch it through a Coke can. Very good. Now, this will change. So, you know, to be in complete honesty, this is the fourth one I did this morning. And today is a very humid day here. Now, the humidity affects the paper. And in, with the first three tries, I was not able to penetrate. Now, you see with this one here, it went straight through. Now, I went and got that from, us, from upstairs, the kids' stuff. It was just other paper hanging around. So it's just less humid today, and it had less access to humidity. But th that's what I want to bring to your attention. I want to understand realism. I want to understand the minimum I can get out of something and trust that it's going to work. So this little fellow, in this case today, in this particular trial, you see he put a nice clear hole into that, into that metal can. And he hasn't damaged himself at all. He's in really good shape. So if it does a tin can, well, it does pretty good. But the point being is that even under humid conditions, um, it would still be able to make very good damage on a human. We would target, um, for example, into the muscle structures in here uh, as a release. Someone grabs you, we could drive it in using it this way as opposed to this way, or you could use it as a, in a pocket and pull it out and, and, and then suddenly make a surprise attack up into the soft areas under the neck, or come from that and up into the eye. Uh, those soft targets that we would attack with this are vulnerable with it, whether it's humid or not, they will make very good damage and very good um, use of, for startle, shock, and injury, which is wonderful for creating chaos and uh, allowing us to uh, get the leap on this, the leapfrog ahead and, and take advantage of the situation. So it's a wonderful thing. So I'll show you again the paper folds. 
very super simple and, and experiment with different paper. You'll find like for example some of the school paper you get in the school books, uh, they're, they're, too, they're too slim. You have to use two and then you'll get the product. So their way, one, two, and three. Okay, the way I did it, I just folded it the other way. So it, it really changes nothing. Like I said, the only reason I do that is not a modification. It doesn't improve anything. It doesn't detract anything. It's just easier to do when you're going blindfolded down the street and, and, and doing this while still keeping an eye on, you know, your situational awareness. So you can see the folds coming in, two and three. Thumbnail in between, folded over, you know. And, and and that's it. This is a this is a make it. Look at look how clean that look how look how clean that cut is. I mean that is a really nice cut. So look at it that way. Eh? So that, my friends, is the Fairburn paper knife in the original form. So keep that in mind. Keep yourself aware. Situation awareness. Number one, preparedness is a gift from situation awareness and knowledge. Now you have both. Have a great day.